Well, good afternoon once again, everybody, and uh, welcome to this Monday, March 15th, and uh, lunchtime with Pastor Shane, as you recall. Uh, and if you are joining us new, this isn't a Bible study where uh, we're going to read scripture and I'm going to sit here and um, expound on it and teach you. This is an opportunity for us to spend a few moments, about 15 minutes, give or take together as we read scripture together, pray together, uh, read some uh, readings for reflection together. And then what is it that the Holy Spirit kind of pops up off of that page from one of those things uh, for you? And then you will spend the rest of your lunch hour uh, in silent meditation, reflection, journaling, uh, as you uh, ask the Holy Spirit to continue to speak into your spirit, uh, what he has uh, for you about that particular word or phrase. Before we get started, though, I want to uh, start from our world's greatest collection of church jokes. Uh, and I picked this one because uh, yesterday was daylight savings time, the beginning of that, and um, sleep uh, becomes a uh, something that uh, we have to adjust to now with this new daylight savings time. It always seems to take me about a month uh, to get used to that hour that we lost. But anyway, this is one about uh, that you probably heard many times before, but it's kind of funny. It says, so far today, God, I've done all right. I haven't gossiped, haven't lost my temper, haven't been selfish, grumpy, nasty, or overindulgent. I'm really glad about that. But in a few minutes, God, I'm going to get out of bed. And from then on, I'm probably going to need a lot more help. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's uh, kind of the way we feel uh, sometimes, isn't it? Well, we begin a new week as we are uh, entering this week leading up to the fifth Sunday in Lent. And our theme for this week is called From Death to Life. So let's begin with our opening prayer, inviting the Holy Spirit into our time together. Let's pray. O oh God, our Father, renew our spirits and draw our hearts to thyself, that our work may not be to us a burden, but a delight. And give us such love to thee as may sweeten all our obedience. Help us that we may serve thee with the cheerfulness and gladness of children delighting ourselves in thee and rejoicing in all that is to the honor of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. That was taken from uh, the book of worship. And now uh, we'll draw our attention to our psalm for this week, which is Psalm 32. So if you want to turn in your Bibles to Psalm 32 or look it up on your Bible in a Bible app or go to Bible Gateway and type it in the search bar, Psalm 32. I'm going to read this from the New International Version. Uh, this is a psalm of David, a mascal. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and whose spirit, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. Well, what word or phrase jumped out at you? I uh, really like the part in uh, starting in verse three. It really uh, talks to us and teaches us about how when we don't confess our sin, when we keep silent, as verse three says, um, our bones waste away um, and we feel God's uh, hand heavy upon me. But then uh, the psalmist talks about how he acknowledged his sin. He no longer kept quiet. He confessed his sin, repented of it. 
and that's when uh, when things changed and he felt the forgiveness uh, of God. Well, our uh, reading for this Monday then, <clears throat> as we draw from a separate scripture each day, uh, today it comes from Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 19. So Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 19, if you want to turn there in your Bibles or pull that up on a Bible app, Matthew 11, <clears throat> verses 2 through 19. And again, I'm going to read today from the New International Version. When John, who is in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No. Those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been raiding it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Whoever has ears, let them hear. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Now, that's what just jumped out at me. And what I will jot down and begin to uh, meditate on. How uh, wisdom and deeds are then connected. Well, our reading for reflection today <clears throat> comes uh, from In Search of the Beyond by Carlo Corretto. This is what he writes We are not happy because we are unforgiving, and we are unforgiving because we feel superior to others. Mercy is the fruit of the highest degree of love, because love creates equals, and a greater love makes us inferior. First, let us establish three premises. Those who do not love feel superior to everyone else. Those who love feel equal to everyone else. Those who love much gladly take the lower place. Each one of us can identify his position somewhere along this spectrum, which comprises the three degrees of the spiritual life here on earth. Death for those who do not love, life for those who love, holiness for those who love much. The beatitude of the merciful relates, like all the beatitudes, to the realm of holiness, and we have to admit that Jesus set his sights high when he had the courage and confidence to place this lofty ideal before us. It is the beatitude that he himself lived to the full, stooping out of love to the lowest place, even to the extent of being rejected as a common criminal, fit only to be hung on a gibbet. Again, that from In Search of the Beyond by Carlo Corretto. Well, as we uh, 
get ready to go into our quiet time with God, I trust that some word or phrase jumped out at you that you want to uh, jot down and meditate on. If not, go back and read those scriptures over again from Psalm 32 and Matthew 11, 2 through 19, and just read them over and over aloud so your uh, spirit hears uh, your voice. In the meantime, let's just pause for a few moments of prayer. I know you may have some people you want to lift up. Uh, it could be uh, for prayers for yourself, uh, other people that you know, members of the family. So take a few moments just to quickly lift them up, and then I'll uh, close in a general prayer, and then we'll um, recite our hymn verse and uh, close out for today. Let's pray. Lord God, we know that there is much brokenness in this world, and we feel it ourselves, and it's not always in our physical bodies. That brokenness shows up in our relationships. It shows up many times in our spirits, as uh, the psalmist uh, we heard from today uh, felt your hand heavy upon them. and uh, the things, uh, things were broken in the spirit due to his sin. And sometimes that uh, brokenness of sin isn't our own doing it's the doing of others that has caused the brokenness in either relationships or in in our spirits uh, but it all drags our mind and emotions down and we uh, find ourselves needing you more than ever so Lord, i just ask your hand uh, of healing and wholeness and peace and grace and compassion and mercy upon every need that has just been lifted up to you upon all the needs that were lifted up in church yesterday uh, Lord, we know that uh, the needs are much, but Lord, we also praise you and we give you honor and glory. We thank you for the life uh, that you have gifted to us. We thank you for the gift of your son, and we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit who guides and directs us every day as we uh, draw closer to you and to one another, loving you and loving one another. And we offer these prayers up in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, our hymn is, O Love Divine, What Hast Thou Done? And that hymn is another hymn that was written uh, by uh, Charles Wesley. <clears throat> it's a three-verse uh, hymn, so we'll read the first verse today. O Love Divine, what hast thou done? The incarnate God hath died for me. The Father's co-eternal Son bore all my sins upon the tree. The Son of God for me hath died. My Lord, my love, is crucified. So those are some good uh, good words there as we uh, share that. So I uh, trust that this is uh, going to be a blessed time for you now as you go into your quiet time with God and that His Holy Spirit will speak into your spirit and uh, you will be able to hear uh, His still small voice. It's what I call the uh, inaudible but unmistakable voice of God as He continues to teach you on that word or that phrase. Now hear this benediction as we close until uh, noontime tomorrow. Be bound to Christ for this day and always. Amen. Amen. We will see you right back here tomorrow. Until then, blessings on you.